skies all open wide, geese go high and over. Oh, now you're a beachcomber, fist full of sand fire, sea lavender. Sea. Welcome to the Deep Dell podcast, December 2020. How we've got to the end of this year, I don't think anybody really knows. It's been a fascinating one for all the wrong reasons. And um, yeah, we thought rather than dwelling on what has been a, uh, an interesting year, we would um, do something a bit different. And um, we're going to think about music. We sadly haven't been able to host very much at Deep Dell this year, but that hasn't stopped Chris getting very excited about lots of great albums. It hasn't stopped us chatting with our friends are out there in the music world. And we put together a really nice listing. Chris, Chris has come up with his, his favorite releases of 2020. And then there'll be a little bit of farm chat between me and Nathan. And, uh, and then we're going to play you a whole bunch of Christmas songs by some of our favorite artists who have played uh, in the past at Deepdale. So hi, Chris, how are you doing? Okay, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, good. And we're doing this on Zoom, so apologies to anybody who's thinking the sound quality is not amazing. But yeah, it's a slightly odd one. And I'm I'm hiding in the the garden room, which is quite frankly freezing at my house. Um, The only company I've got is a Christmas tree um, because there's builders ripping apart my bathroom. Um, And you're uh, you're at home, not that far away. So neither of us are at Deepdale at the moment. Um, It's very quiet there. Uh, very quiet there. So we're going to concentrate on positive stuff. We're going to concentrate on great music, which is the important thing. So, yes. um, so yeah. tell me, Chris. So how many, how many, how many albums are we talking about? About nine or so. With you know, you yeah, you, nine or so. I think with a yeah. few, a few little uh, honourable mentions along the way. Uh, Excellent. Sort of, sort of albums and, and pieces of music that aren't quite strictly twenty twenty or. Or, or albums, in fact, but yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so we're, we're loosely, we're loosely, um, you know, loosely covering this as 2020 releases, but it might be 20, 2020 when we discovered them rather than when they necessarily were released. So yeah, it's, no, a, it's a slightly yeah. vague kind of collection, but it's a great collection. So that's all that matters. Yeah, all, all of the ones on the list, um, the main list, were released in 2020. It's a strange year, I think, for music, um, has to be said. Um, we've got some albums on the list that are from uh, American American acts who were able to carry on recording f- and producing and mixing their albums a little bit later than artists over here because of the way that the pandemic moved across the world. So that's uh, you know one of the one of the um, the themes that happened through this year. And of course, many artists um, have not been able to record very much or if they've been recording they've been recording from home you know we've got a few a few albums on the list who which have been sort of home recorded or home produced and uh, I sat in on a few live streams um, earlier in the year first lockdown in particular when uh, artists were were showcasing their new albums and and they were they were a good way of getting through that early part of, of lockdown so we'll focus on a couple of those Excellent, excellent. So, who who is up? Are we taking this list? You know, I've I've seen I've pre seen this list. So, are we taking them in order, or would you like to uh, randomly select? Oh, we can we can go in a sort of order, I suppose. You know, we okay. can go for, we can go for the the sort of American acts first. You know, the acts that we've got to know um, over the the years. And, uh, and and we love here Sheila and I and some Sheila introduced to me such as the Jayhawks who are her favourite band and uh, they brought an album out this year XOXO which uh, they've just been going from strength to strength in the last few years uh, two or three albums that have come out that have been absolutely fantastic this last one is more of a collaboration between the whole band rather than um, songs from their main songwriter normally gary lewis 
but he's been out there on um, on Facebook in particular, running live streams through lockdown with his 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 shit show as he calls it um, on a regular basis over from America. We've been we've been getting and uh, he's been playing a lot of Jayhawks classics um, and been fantastic, really good. And uh, we saw them uh, for the first time together. We saw them at Mosley and uh, Mosley Folk Festival in Birmingham, which of course didn't happen this year either. And uh, met the band, and uh, that was that was a great great moment. And so that's that's a really good album to catch up with. XOXO, it's uh, it's out, and uh, yeah, superb Excellent. stuff. Excellent. my field by the jayhawks so what's next on your list so that was the jayhawks xo xo um mm. uh, who, who are you going to pick off your list next um i think another another act actually that we that we saw um and discovered for the first time at mosley it's a great little folk festival over in birmingham really fantastic and it introduced us to american country um star called courtney marie andrews back in 20 2016 and um she just brought out her breakthrough album um, in the uk on this life and uh, she's had a new album out this year grammy nominated um, called old flowers which again we saw early in lockdown first lockdown she she did a live stream raising funds for her crew um, because they were unable to work as have lots of um you know, lots of crew, road crew and sound technicians. And so it's important to focus on them. And one of the reasons that people should should get out and buy these artists' albums is because it does actually help support not just the artist, but their support crew as well through this. And uh, yeah, Old Flowers, it isn't the cheeriest of albums. And I think that's a theme through the year. You know, it's not really been a year for... for, um, um, happy music and it's not the happiest of albums uh, it deals with the, a dark period in her life but she is a wonderful wonderful artist and so that's got to be on our list for 2020 yeah fantastic i love the fact that you and sheila have no qualms about introducing me to some amazing music and uh, we've some seen some awesome gigs in previous years and i'm looking forward to when those return and uh, being able to see some of these uh, these guys it's going to be fantastic yeah so, um, it will be uh, will be good it will be yeah, good no, it, will, it will be it'll be yeah, it'll be very nice to return so what, what's next on your list and then I think that the, the, the final one from over the pond, I think, is Jason Isbell, um, who is he is master songwriter. Um, 
um, from drive-by truckers originally, but on his own now with his, his band, The 400 Unit, and his album this year is, is called Reunions. Um, and he was going to tour this year. We were going to see him, um, obviously cancelled as well. Um, but a great sort of Americana um, country rock um, songwriter. Difficult to categorise, as so many people are these days. Um, but no, that I love now. I love the well fact that it's hard to categorise. I love the yeah, fact it that is, bands you know, are kind of crossing, crossing genres, crossing, um, you know, musical. T- I just, I, I love that cross pollination of all these mm. things. And you think of some of the yeah. acts we've had at Deepdale Festival, you mm. know, Fran and Flora, you know, people like that who um, just, it, it's just so different and and unusual, and um, you know, and it's taking you know sort of those unusual classical um instruments or, or sort of me- or even medieval instruments almost and turning those into you know sort of uh, fantastic music and i think that i love that kind of cross-pollination between all these things it's great it is absolutely and you know the, the albums on this list you know r- roll through the the genres and the categories you know, little red kings is on the list with their latest album you know the magic show part one uh, which has not been out all that long. And they're a band that, you know, I've, I've known them for a long time from when I first started arranging music and they've developed over the years. And this album is, is, a, is a real, real step, I think, in, in maturity and polish um, while retaining the, the earthiness of their, their sound um, and their approach to music and you know they've got great depth of blues rock in this album as well it's 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 really earthy um and it's 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 great really really good and of course they were due to play at the festival in september yeah. um, and uh, will hopefully be with us next year when we rerun it jason's voice is that's not jason, my voice that's jason, no, jason wick yeah, little yeah red jason kings. wick yeah leader you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't want me singing on the stage that would that would <laughs> um there'd be an awful lot of refund demands at that point i think his voice is in incredible shape on this album he's absolutely belting out these songs and i think the surprising thing for me perhaps they they would not want me to say surprising um, the wonderful thing for me is is the harmonies the the vocals on this album are, are tremendous absolutely tremendous it's it's got real real depth real depth and uh, and hits it's, the production is is, is brilliant production is yeah. really really good and yeah. they are a norfolk band that should i've always said this but they should be much better known across the country than they are um, yeah. they really should
That was the fabulous Weather the Storm by the Little Red Kings. These albums, you know, they're, they're out there. Okay, you can listen to the, the stuff online. You can listen to it on Spotify. Uh, absolutely, you can. Um, but, you know, the, the physical albums, you can get the physical album from them and getting it from them, as with all these other artists, is the best way of supporting them through this. Yeah, absolutely, and we're gonna be we're gonna be pointing everybody in the direction of the of the places like Bandcamp where they can actually buy these albums, and the artists actually receive, you know, a, a decent proportion of the uh, the the mm-hmm. money for them, rather than uh, um, rather yeah. than you know yeah. streaming them and they're getting you know less than pennies. So, yeah, I mean, there's no you know there's no doubt that, that the streaming services get get exposure for people, but being in a band. Um, or be an amateur band myself you know the the number of times we've been asked to play for exposure is you know i've lost count of the number of times that that's happened and it's the biggest load of rubbish going (laughs) if you want to support a band buy their stuff simple as that yeah exactly yeah absolutely um I think you might have missed a, you know, a big American band off, uh, off your list. Um, you know, you've jumped into the Norfolk bands, which is awesome, <laughs> oh, yes. but yeah, you, you yeah, might have yeah. missed the Dixie true. chicks. I, I, yeah. I, as much yeah, as we'd like true. to claim them for Norfolk, um, I've got, <laughs> um, got a feeling that um, their, their background and accents slightly give away that they, uh, they may not be from Norfolk. No, no, that's true. Yeah, Dixie Chicks, Gaslighter, um, which is um, highly topical at the moment as we're about to get rid of the um, the world's largest ever gaslighter um, in the shape of um, the ex-president of the United States, um, is, is, is uh, a real um, comeback to form for them. Um, great to see them back with an album. It's not focused on Trump, but um, it's focused on a more personal situation. And it's a very, very, um, very... Uh, yeah, very di- direct, very angry, very up record. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great. It's it's typical Dixie Chicks and we love them. Then, you know, some of my favourite lads in the, well, yeah, lads and girls in the uh, music industry, Das Fenster and the Alibis, who uh, just <laughs> uh, got this wonderful persona. If anybody's read their website, you know, they're sort of, um, they've created um, these alter egos for each member of the band and stuff, uh, you know. Alter uh, egos? So. What, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> alter, that is them. That is them. Yeah. They are. They are. Yeah. They're a shining light and darkness um, in this strange, crazy world that we've been in this year. And their new album, Lucky Charms and Firearms. Um, you know, they couldn't have a big launch gig, and so what there is, there's a 30 minute launch film Which on is Facebook. Really worth watching. It's it is really worth watching. I watched it again last night just to remind myself how fantastic it was, um, and it's it's great and. You know, listen to the songs on the new album. You know, we've heard quite a few of them at Deepdale um, over several different performances as they've sort of brought them to a live audience and developed them. And it really is the flavour of their, you know, their their shows um, and themselves as musicians and a band. And they they they're absolutely cracking. You know, I've got to, loads of time for them. And if you really do want to cheer yourself up. In the current dark times, Das Fenster and the Alibis, Lucky Charms and Firearms is the album to go for. Definitely. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Great album. Really mm. good. Good fun. I can see you've got a need We don't ask no questions We're totally discreet There's something that you're after That you can't get nowhere else We'll step inside our fitting room And see what's on the shelf Come on in, we're gonna help you sing Roll up, roll up, roll up Gather right, we're gonna drag you down Roll up, roll up, roll up Come on in Any current 
currency will do But don't use checks or credit cards They can be traced back to you You'll agree they're not expensive And the ride is worth the fare And if your old lady comes asking We'll swear you were never here Come on in, we're gonna help you soon Roll up, roll up That was Roll Up by Das Fenster and the Alibis then we're on to, to albums from artists who were going to appear um, for the first time at Deep Dale um, this year and obviously couldn't and have both, you know, both, both sort of signed up and agreed to come back uh, and see us next year, which is fantastic because they're both absolutely wonderful artists. Um, Kirsty Merrin with her album Our Bright Night, which came out earlier this year and uh, again was 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 live stream launched out there um and is is a beautiful work of art you know it's a it's a folk album but it ranges um through a night and picks picks you up at dusk and takes you through the night um, with a series of songs and pieces and then leaves you at dawn um, the following morning and it is um, written largely for piano um, arrangements. Her voice is, is, is fantastic. And the songs themselves just evoke this, um, this, this night um, of you know, exploring various themes through, through uh, it's, very, it's very English, I think. And it brings to mind for me pieces like um, Dart by Alice Oswald, um, the poetic work about the River Dart and sort of One Night in the River Dart. Also, um, you know, Kitty McFarlane's um, Name of Clouds sort of comes to mind in how um, self-contained it is as a work of art. It's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So you quite like that album then? I do. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely brilliant, and um, I can I can already you know envision her sat in the church where we were going to have a, a deep down church playing um, some of these songs, and the audience would be blown away. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be awesome. Such big fingers crossed for uh, an un, uneventful September, so we can actually host Deep Dale's, uh, Deep yeah. Dale Festival. It would be yeah. just wonderful. Courage, sisters, we must depart A bright night gone, this new day dark Courage, sisters, we can't abide The king requires our robe to make a bed for his new bride Courage sisters We have to go The widow lost And those who could not reap What they would sow This sighing chapel This creaking cot no more a home for those who have and those who have not. Come, beloved, we have to go from those above to us below. Come, Beloved, we mustn't stay The poorest shall inherit all The rich have thrown away Come, beloved, with shaking hands The promises from high are built on sinking sod and sand the beautiful Our Bright Night by Kirsty Merrin. Yeah, Martin Simpson 
who was going to be headlining uh, our, our Sunday Sunday evening legend slot, and he is a legend. You know, he's one. He's just one of the best guitarists out there. Just one of the best guitarists out there, and he's got a new album out, Home Recordings, which, as as said, um, sounds was recorded uh, largely at home during lockdown. And he's been putting a lot of stuff out on live stream and continues to do so to keep people cheered and supported with music through this time. And a, a wonderful, wonderful album, top 10 um, folk album, chart album. He's a you know, multi-award winning, um, just great guitar playing, great songs, great vocals um, and sort of companion pieces. He's got a band um, that he's in with Nancy Kerr and two other guys. And uh, called the Magpie Arc, and there they put out two EPs, EP one and EP two, they call them, and they're 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 more band um, oriented um, recordings, and they're brilliant as well. So yeah, Martin Simpson, you you shouldn't miss miss that, and is a lovely lead into, hopefully welcoming him to Deepdale next year. <laughs> from Montgomery by Martin Simpson. I, I love the, the lineup you managed to pull together for the festival. I just, uh, and I know I discussed some of the acts with you about it, but the stuff that you pull out, and I, you know, there I am pulling up all this information to build the website and, uh, and um, prepare things like the little newspaper we do every day and that sort of stuff. And it's just, I, I'm like, Oh my word, these guys are playing in my barn. This is so cool. You know, and it's, um, mm, yeah, it, it is, it's, it, it's fantastic. So, uh, yeah, no, I love, I love doing it. It's, it's, it's a fantastic thing that, you know, got into a few years ago, knowing nothing about how to do it and uh, have had all of these wonderful, mus wonderful musicians from Norfolk and beyond happy to come and play. And it's just been the best journey you know the best journey and you know the people that we've got to know um you know sam co the guys from little red kings dougie and jason marina florence the the shackleton trio with adam clark and you know all these all these people they're just so talented so talented and you really feel for them 
through this period you know we've had it tough there's no question we've had it tough at deep down but we haven't had it as tough as 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 musicians who are you know trying to make their livelihoods and not being able to do it because it's just not safe to be out there you know james mars who i've known right from the very start who's who's now you know the mammal not fish guys jess morgan Tin Hart Troubadours, Lisa Redford, Matt Watson, all of those people that I've known for a very long time now. And, you know, you, you want to get back hearing their music played live. And hopefully we will do next year. You know, and lots of others that I've, you know, got to know since moving to Deepdale. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so, yeah, hopefully. Of course, Jess does, a, Jess created our intro for, for the Deepdale podcast. Um, yeah. And uh, but she's had yeah. very exciting news because she's got her, her little baby now. So she's yeah, uh, yeah. Um, had Fantastic. a bit, had a, a got some, got definitely got some stuff to distract her from uh, from making music at the moment. Mm. Um, so uh, yeah, that's very cool. So many congratulations to her. So it's fantastic. So you, there might, I, I think, by the looks of it, um, that you've Here's got a couple a, more. an album Here's... of twenty. Your your album of twenty twenty. What, what what are you going for for that? Yeah, and and this is a, this is an artist that I've sort of highlighted as as one for deep down in the future if we can possibly persuade her to come and play, and that's it's Kate Stables and and her her nom de plume or her band is this is the kit, and um, she is just the most individually creative um artist um crossing genres saw her at mosley again mosley folk for the first time um, with her wonderful banjo and um followed her ever since and her album this year is um, her album this year is off off on and um again produced um in lockdown but is is just wonderful it's just fantastic you're never going to get bored of listening to that album you know she's got an incredible way of using her voice as an instrument and layering rhythms and chords and notes it's just fantastic it moves um it moves between folk um through pop sensibilities a little bit of jazz it just goes all over the place. And she's just the, the loveliest person as well. Saw her at the Roundhouse in London. Um, and she was due to play Norwich Arts Centre um, this year and early next. And I think that's been rearranged again. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. Off, off, on. This is the kit. Um, brilliant album. And if I can get her to come and play at Deepdale, I will. So this is an official invite. We'd like <laughs> this is the kit playing at Deepdale Festival mm. uh, in the not too oh, distant future. That would be amazing. Would be truly amazing. Um, Excellent. So, um, any uh, you know, I, I think you might have some honourable mentions. That yeah, there's a, yeah, to... there's a yeah, there's a couple of honourable mentions. There's there's one that got away this year, which I think I can now talk about as as we've gone through this year and, and everyone's rolled over for next year. One that got away this year who I dearly love to have had play um, at Deepdale and hopefully will do in the future is Catherine Williams. And she's got a, a winter single out um, in a collaboration with Carol Ann Duffy, a poet. And that is lovely. It's called Snow Angel. It's been on the Radio 2 Folk Show. It's not an album. It's a single. Um, but you can uh, head off and uh, download that. It's it's a really gorgeous little Christmas single. And, uh, if uh, if uh, I can persuade Catherine to come and play at Deep Down, we nearly, nearly had her this year, but not quite. So um, she's uh, one that got away and uh, an artist that I followed for years. Uh, Mercury Prize winner. Just amazing. Truly Excellent. amazing. Excellent. But, we'll yes, see if we our, can get our... a sample of the uh, of Snow Angel to go with our Christmas tunes for the last part of this podcast. That'd be great. Yeah, really and our, our honourable mentions um, are um, two two bands that we've worked with at Deepdale uh, now uh, a few times, and I've worked with um, one of them for a long time. Um, the the, the honourable Christmas mention has to go to the Shackleton Trio. Um, they've got their Christmas single out now, um, available to um, download um, by all the usual places, and they're going to retrain as Santa Claus. Um, so that's their Christmas single. 
they have got a live streaming gig um, tomorrow, actually, if this podcast have, is going to come be out a, before a European then. wide one. So, the, yeah, uh, yeah they're is. covering all of those countries that they were supposed to be touring through yeah. Scandinavia and Northern Europe and stuff as well. So, and that's accessible through Facebook on a, a ticket donation basis. It's, it's actually free to access, but ticket donation. So, please try and donate something um, to that if you uh, hook into that. Be great to see them playing live again. Um, and then final honourable mention is um, for a um, band who really cheered me up tremendously at the start of all of this um, terrible COVID stuff. They, they, they moved heaven and earth to put a, a, a live stream together right at the start of lockdown. And um, the tech worked incredibly well it was a wonderful well. wonderful evening of music there was quite a lot of alcohol involved at their end i think um but it didn't detract from the performances they were absolutely amazing absolutely stonking yeah, um, and their album came out towards the end of last year probably didn't get as much um, of a push as it would have done um, because they couldn't get out this year and gig it um, but yeah man the lifeboats um, yeah honorable mention for services to um, music in lockdown um, at the start of this year truly wonderful live stream truly great band due to come back to us um, this year for our Beltane festival that never happened due to come back to us next year if we get the chance to run something around that time and their album, When the Time Bell Rings, is great. Absolutely great. It really will um, cheer you up, although it does have a couple of politically motivated songs, Just which little. have um, some very prescient comments, I think, to make about the situation we find ourselves in today, literally today, after what's been going on um, the last few days. But brilliant band. Um, and um, yeah, best live stream of lockdown for me, um, hands down. So thanks, guys. Hopefully share a beer with you again soon. Yeah, they are. They're great fun. And, and the, the videos of all of us dancing uh, to them <laughs> when they were on the on the stage and uh, you you guys all taking that photo with all the crowd behind was just superb from that yeah. uh, gig. So, yeah, it, it, they are welcome yeah, great memories. anytime, anytime in that uh, in the Brick Barn. They they absolutely set that place on fire and it was superb. Blood on the rails When the engine fails And a foul wind blows Through Britannia's sails It's a hundred year storm And there's a media swarm All whipped up by men in uniform What is the cause? Of funding these wars When children are sleeping on hospital floors And the poor and diseased Are they down on their knees We should be blaming the banks, not the refugees And as we wait in the harbour for the storm And the band play on This little universe Where fear is a curse And if you close your borders You just make it worse The whole country's on the brink
When the Ship Goes Down by Man the Lifeboats. Well, thank you, Chris. That's a superb lineup. Really fantastic. Um, we'll, if you're looking for where to buy all these albums, all the information will be on our on our blog post, on our website, um, and on social media. And um, yeah, we hope that you can buy yourself a, a Christmas present with some of these or all of these albums. Um, really worth worth purchasing and uh, and listening to. Um, and uh, yeah, remember, support those musicians. Um, they've had a really tough year and uh, they could do with all of your help um, and any of these live streaming gigs, where the, particularly where they're raising funds for, um, for their crews and stuff, you know, please do support them. It, it's fantastic. Well, cheers, man. Um, happy Christmas to you. Yeah, and happy and, Christmas uh, to I, everyone I out know there. We'll chat lots, but um, yeah, you know, massive happy Christmas to everybody, uh, everybody, all of our wonderful listeners and all our wonderful customers out there. Um, have a fantastic festive season wherever you end up being and whoever you end up being with. Um, and enjoy the rest of the podcast, particularly the the Christmas tunes um, that uh, will hopefully set you in the in the right festive spirit. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot, Chris. Cheers. chat with nathan and jason so hello lovely man hello so farm chat farm, farm chat is squished between farm chat. Or, or or is the um no it, it's sandwiched between um chris's favorite uh, releases of 2020 music releases of 2020 right and christmas uh, you know uh, some of our favorite christmas songs by our the lovely artists who come to deep Dell. yes so it's going to be a very festive, um, you know, very festive podcast. It sort of feels like we're almost doing a sort of, you know, uh, six music um, um, radio show where we sort of thing and we're fitting in, you know, the the uh, the academically um, sort of clever bit in the middle with the, uh, you know, with the with the farm chat. Although they have oh, I'm chosen so us. sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> boy, did you come to the wrong guy. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I sort of knew what I was aiming for. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's it's that sort of weird time, isn't it? Sort of December where you kind of like, well, this winter time where kind of crops, we can't do a lot to make the crops do much more right now. And we can't put anything more in the ground, can we? No, it's too late now. I mean, I've been standing in the middle of a field recently going, Grow! Yeah. Uh, but so we have we have drilled our first organic crop of winter wheat and that is poking its little heads Hello. up. Hello. Uh so the winter wheat is is up and away and that's only going to be doing stuff very slowly. Chances are it's being grazed off by pink feet geese as we speak. Excellent. But, uh, yeah. Good, yeah, brilliant. Um, Thanks a lot, geese. Well yeah. the geese bless them. I mean we've got geese and we've got lapwing and we've got curly hanging around on the farm and Which they're, is they're, lovely, but they're, not yeah. yeah. They're all welcome guests, but hopefully if they can find other <laughs> stuff to nibble on apart from the wheat that would um, be nice yeah they could eat the mustard which we don't care about yeah, yeah. indeed yeah. there's i think there's a there's very much a sense of there's all the sort of the preparation that we have to do so it's it's too late to stick any other crops in the ground now because the ground's too cold and anything that we stick in it's not going to be too happy i can speak it's it is cold it is a bit nippy I'm just standing up on tsb thinking if i was a plant right now yeah i don't want it and you'll have seen actually on tsb um that that we've we've stuck so tsb being our biggest field that had potatoes in it until until not so long ago and we stuck a cover crop in there of mustard which come you know jumps up enthusiastically as you like way and the mustard is up and away and is covering the ground and is doing some stuff to sort of bind the soil together which is really good we also stuck some vetch in to a couple of our new plots and that's not done much at all I have to say it was very difficult to tell whether there was any vetch at all and not just weeds yeah there's just a tad in there the, the foliage is thinner so it's difficult to see anyway the little yeah. sort of thin little leaves but it's actually not doing too much and it's a possibility that we may have to go back over and sort of redrill the vetch in the spring we'll see how it goes but yeah so we it's a sort of in, in betweeny time but actually 
we are looking at the the woodland that we have on the farm and the act and the management activities that we've got on that and starting to think about a plan for that and we've got loads of work to do on our hedgerows in january and february and we'll have some conservation work days uh coming up our on wild wednesdays, wednesdays. Our, our, our wild wednesday is coming up I think and we'll the first be, one's about thirteenth of January or something. Yeah, so, yeah. and we've got we'll we'll be doing some hedge laying, we'll be doing some replanting of the hedgerows and we'll be doing some coppicing. So there's a mix of different activities. Um the, some of it's gonna look quite scary. I mean basically coppicing means we're gonna cut it down to the ground. It means it's just an excuse for you to play with your chainsaw. Yes. That's there is that, um, but hopefully it means that we get to rejuvenate the hedgerows that we've got on the farm, and they should in a few years they should start to look a lot a lot more bonny. So the idea is basically you cut them off what just above ground level. We cut them off to the ground, to the, uh, the ground. pretty much. Uh, just above ground level and we sort of try and put in sloping cuts to discourage the water from sort of pooling in the middle of the plant and that will stimulate the plant to regrow from the base Uh, so what we should end up with is lots of nice new young um, growth of mainly hawthorn and where we have gaps in the hedgerows because we have quite a lot of gaps we'll be planting in new hawthorn and blackthorn plants and uh, you know a few hedgerow trees and this is all basically we've got several kilometers we've got about 30 kilometers of hedgerows around the farm altogether and we're actually doing about sort of eight to ten kilometers worth of replanting coppicing and laying so um, I did a survey a little while ago and we know all the gaps that we've got all the bits of hedgerow that are unhealthy you've got some very pretty maps haven't you very pretty maps yeah uh, so we have a plan and uh, you know there will be plenty of work to do for us to sort of do that so that's January February and then by the time we're getting into sort of February March we're thinking about drilling our spring crops yeah. so we'll have barley and beans going in and we're just working out at the moment um, you know an organic variety of spring bean that we can stick in and uh, some spring what's barley the, what's the quality name of the one that we're thinking about uh, the version of spring bean that we're thinking about sticking in is called LG Cartouche I do love the name Cartouche that's Cartouche. a great name that's yes. a great name yeah we got, you know, there, are some, there are some good crop names yeah. Um, so yeah we'll, we'll try sticking in some, some of the Cartouche and uh, you know we'll see my so my understanding of like spring beans what I've been told I think it was possibly John Porcy down at Shrimpling Park Farm said you know beans are a um, sort of uh, I wish uh, crop in that uh, depending on how they grow you either say I wish I hadn't bothered <laughs> or I wish we'd sown more yeah yeah and uh, so yeah. we shall see but it's part of our rotation and being a legume then what we have is apart from having a crop at the end of this which will go which will sell uh, we the the crop will also have fixed nitrogen in the soil so it's doing a little bit of fertility building for the next crop that goes into that field which will be barley barley. yeah Uh, so yeah we're just we're this is the you know next year is the our sort of first year of being fully organic uh, in terms of going into our conversion and sort of basically bringing the rotation in, and you know, it, there's, so there's slightly a of- messy, isn't it? Because we're like where we would normally do sort of winter barley and that sort of stuff. We're still waiting for fields to be returned to us from carrots and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So it's a kind of a bit of a it's a bit of a messy first year. And I think it took you and I a little while to get our heads round uh, the plan that Stephen Briggs and because we were like, that's not what we thought we were doing. And then he was like, no, no, don't be dumb. Like, yeah. this is your first year or two where you have to kind of get back into a rotation. Yeah. And that means that some fields are going to be slightly abnormal in the way that you handle them for the next couple of years. Yeah. And we'll have lots of opportunities to play, you know, to sort of modify slightly what we're doing in the future. But it's sort of necessary for us to sort of stick to a plan for the time being. And we, you know, we have a plan kicking in now for the farm, which we you know we're already on and we have our pre-conversion inspection coming up next week so we'll be uh, sort of answering lots of questions and basically that's, we'll get, uh, that's the organic farmers and growers yeah so our certification body you know we've got sort of two of the best known certification bodies in the UK most a lot of people will have heard of the soil association and um, there, there is another, uh, the other big certification body is organic farmers and growers and we've gone with OFNG and we've had a really really helpful certification officer who she has uh, she, had, she, she has answered a lot of questions she has answered a million and one of my stupid questions and 
and um, so, you know they've been very sort of helpful at basically guiding us through the process so far. And you know, essentially, this conversion process takes two years until we are fully organic. We are, as of now, we're you know what you could call in conversion organic. So we're in betweenies. Um, but you know, this is this is all about getting us you know down the route of you know all the sprays, all the chemicals, all that stuff's gone off the farm already. We've gone cold turkey. We are fully, you know, we're we're fully committed. It feels really nice, you know. I, I really does. like it. I, re- yeah. I, I, you know, I love the fact that I'm not staring at huge bags of um, of fertilizer and huge bags of nitrogen and stuff. And I just feel it just feels freeing. Yeah. You know, I, I, granted, we haven't actually grown anything yet, which we can harvest yeah. this side of that. But you know that. That's all to be thing. But then let's face it, we've had fields where we've put everything you could possibly think of putting on those fields and we've still ended up having to effectively mow them because there's nothing worth harvesting on them. So, you know, if we do that with an organic crop, at least we haven't put half of, you know, the um, the chemical world onto those fields no, to get nothing. You absolutely. know, it, it's it's... It feels very, it feels very different to, yeah. to how it did. The practices that we're adopting now hopefully mean that you know, you know, our aim is very much to you know, yeah, we still want good crops out of these fields. We still want the fields to be productive, but as a result of doing things the way that we're moving towards doing them, you know, regardless of what happens, it will be better for wildlife because because most of the farm is now basically a margin for wildlife. Um, it will be uh, it will be better for the soil, and hopefully we'll see you know we'll see the results in more earthworm activity and higher levels of organic organic matter in the soil and all the stuff we've talked about previously. More honey, more honey, yeah. More honey, yeah. So our our lovely friendly local beekeeper Dominic Dominic Edmonds, I basically said to him, we will need more bees because we are going to be you know he's providing, getting quite excited about the idea. Yeah, actually. we'll That's be providing cool. massively more for pollinators on the yeah. farm. Uh, so so yeah you know next year is going to be next year is going to I mean this year has been insane in terms of the in terms of all the changes that have happened and, and the sort of the you know the decisions that that have been taken you know to to sort of really change the direction of this farm and next year is when we're fully getting into it and it's yeah I'm, I'm stoked well it's lovely to chat with you man you too have a fantastic Christmas and you and um, yeah um we look forward to enjoying um, more chats in 2021, which A, is going to be a better year. I'm just determined it is going to be Totes, a better year. Yes. And uh, B, is going to be fantastic because we're going to be um, going full bore into organic and uh, our countryside stewardship scheme, which is going to be fantastic. So Bring it on. Nice to chat with you, man. Have you a too. great Christmas. Take Cheers. <laughs> Well, thanks for listening to the Deepdale podcast, December 2020, our Christmas edition. Uh, We hope you have survived the uh, weirdness of 2020 and that 2021 brings you and all of us a a better better year. I'm not going to interrupt the the Christmas tunes. Um, There's some some wonderful samples of some fabulous songs. Uh, So we'll say goodbye and happy Christmas to you all. And hopefully a much happier new year. And I will leave you with um, a whole bunch of tunes that include a lovely little intro from Little Red Kings. I Believe in Father Christmas by Lisa Redford. Gonna Retrain as Santa Claus by the Shackleton Trio. Whiskey for Christmas by Man the Lifeboats. Snow Angel by Catherine Williams and Carol Ann Duffy. The Winter Wind by Marina Florence. Every Christmas by Dusky Sunday, Christmas at Home by Fred's House, I'll Be Home for Christmas by Tilly Moses, and Ye Mariners All by Rattlebox. Have a fantastic Christmas, keep well, keep sane, and we'll hope to see you all in 2021. Thanks for listening. Yo, where my sleigh bells at? I said sleigh bells! Sleigh bells! Merry Christmas bells. from Little Red Kings. More, more sleigh bells. It's Christmas sleigh bells. Merry Christmas. It's too much sleigh bells. Merry too much.
Merry Christmas. Me too much sleigh bells. Merry Christmas from Little Red Kings. They said there'll be snow at Christmas. They said there'll be peace on earth. But instead it just kept on raining A veil of tears for the virgin birth I remember one Christmas morning The winter's light and a distant choir And the peal of a bell and that Christmas tree smell And eyes full of tinsel and fire They sold me a dream they sold me a silent night They sold me a fairy story Till I believed in the Israelite And I believed in Father Christmas I looked to the sky with excited eyes Then I woke with a yawn in the first light of dawn I saw him and through his disguise It's arguments and Christmas cheer But this year I'm gonna be trained Gonna be trained Gonna be trained as Santa Claus I'm gonna be trained Gonna be trained Gonna be trained as Santa Claus I once played music Now I can't use it Gonna be trained as Santa Claus I'll drink whiskey and I'll Help me shut a free train as a chimney sweep. So I'm gonna be trained, gonna be trained, gonna be trained as a chimney sweep. I once played music, now I can't use it. Gonna be trained as a chimney sweep. I once played music, now I can't use it. Gonna be trained.
I could hear my mother calling from the house of cooking smells and light in the garden where the snow all day had fallen, where I waited for that Christmas night, and the wheelbarrow looked like a manger, and the bushes looked like me. Make it through the night Knowing Santa Claus was there I'd 
wake up in the morning and I'd run right down the stairs to the train. Stare at all of the presents, trying to guess which ones were mine. As the mince pies in the oven start to complement the scent of the pine. Drink, think not amiss 
and pop your nose in a jug of this. Oh, now I'm old and can scarcely crawl. I've an old grey beard and a head that's bald. Crown my desire and fulfil my bliss. A pretty young girl and a jug of this. Oh, when I'm in my grave and dead, and all my sorrows are past and fled, transform me then into a fish, and let me swim in a jug of this.